All right. I think that's looking better. Sorry if you happen to see the first one. Um, I still figuring out how to do this whole Facebook Live thing with my phone and make it show right. And so anyway, um, let me just get pulled up over on my computer now. So today is Thursday, March. Hopefully it's going to come back. There we go. Okay. Are we still here? I don't know. The, the delay on it makes it really challenging, but it looks like I'm back. So, okay, good. Sorry about that. <sighs> Some days just things go smoothly and others it's kind of a joke, but that's all right. So anyway, I am excited to be here showing you <clears throat> the most recent paper pumpkin. Um, now this month it came in a special box, which, I mean, it's always fun to see, but I will admit I really don't care. I flip them inside out and use them to mail card orders to people or, um, you know, just anything, um, anything that I'm sending that fits. So they're really nice boxes, but like I said, I flip them. All right, so there's that. And then I wanted to take a few minutes and just show you all of the components. So this month it's making eight cards and they actually sent craft envelopes, which we used to carry and don't anymore, but they're really fun. And then they also included these beautiful liners. And so the idea is that you just put your adhesive on and then when you slide it into the envelope, and there you go. But I'll tell you, you only can see it to here. And I saw some other people doing this too, where they are cutting this down. So then you've got a whole piece of DSP to work with and you still get to line your envelope. So I'm gonna show you how to do that tonight. So I'll set the extra ones off to the side here. And then it also included <clears throat> pretty peacock die cuts. Um, so that I think I said it's here's to you. So the theme was adventure. Um, but mountains and pine trees. <clears throat> so really, really gorgeous. Um, so that's all of that. And then these cloud die cuts. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, so that's those. And then these are designed to go on the Pretty Peacock card base. Um, and I will tell you, Pretty Peacock was one of my absolute favorite colors. And it, it is retiring, um, which we knew, but if you want anything in the pretty peacock, whether it's the ink or the ink refill or the paper, you need to get it because the, the in color stuff always goes faster than anything else. And then this is the other card base and it's got this pretty printed image and then you decorate over it. So the kit also includes a full stamp set and this round I'll show you that in a second but it always includes an ink spot and they try to make it a different color every month for a year and so in a year's time you'll have 12 of our I think 50 colors so that's pretty exciting because um, those ink spots are nice they're really handy in terms of traveling or if um you're trying to ink bigger stamps, sometimes it's nice to have the stamp face up and just ink like this. So it also included mini dimensionals and mini glue dots, which are always super handy and they always send way more than you actually need. And then instructions, and there's a little measuring tape at the bottom for the ribbon that they included. And then on the back side, it tells you what your coordinating colors were um, and then it gives some ideas for different things you can do with the kit contents. So that's fun too. And sometimes I'll make those up just to, if I'm having trouble getting a feel for the kit, um, aside from just what it was intended for. So that's really nice. And if you're a subscriber, they also send out an email every month. Um, and this month there was a free gift, um, March is Paper Pumpkin's birthday month. And so 
they always include some kind of free gift. This month it was a full size sponge and four stencils. And I used them all and I have not washed them yet. So they look kind of gross. But this one is clouds and then starry night. I don't want that white ink to get onto anything else. Um, and then this really pretty sunburst and the mountain ones. And so this mountain one is kind of weird. And so I did watch the video that they linked to in that email um, just to sort of figure out what they were trying to do with it. So it's several different mountain lines so that you get, you can ink it with different colors and you end up with a more realistic look so that it looks like, you know, the mountains are getting further and further away. So that was interesting. I made it work. Um, I feel like it's something that would take a little more practice than the other stencils. So let me show you. And then if you're one of my Paper Pumpkin subscribers, you always get an email with three alternate ideas um, just to kind of help get your creative juices flowing in case you're wanting to make alternates as well. So this was one of the main cards, except that I didn't read the instructions, go figure. And I didn't wrap this linen thread around it like they said. I just slapped that printed page on with glue and then realized that I was messing that up. So I just tied a little bow and stuck it on with a glue dot, but I think it still turned out nice. And they did have a stamp birds on the card. Um, and then there's its coordinating envelope. And here is the other one. And so this one, I actually paid attention to the instructions. I was kind of proud of myself. Um, and all of the layers are popped up on here. So that makes it pretty fun too. Um, just give it some extra dimension and the little nest of linen thread there. So I really think these are gorgeous and they could definitely be a little bit more masculine than a lot of the cards, especially like last month's floral kit or um, some of the others that we've done recently. So that's all of that. And let me see what else I wanted to tell you before I actually get started. Okay, so this month, I don't know how much attention you guys paid to the world of Stampin' Up!, but yesterday they announced the retiring list for the annual catalog. And let me just tell you, I spent some time kind of dealing with my feelings because I was pretty sad about what is retiring. And I always do that. And I always know that it's going to be amazing things that come to replace it, but it's not a direct replacement. And so there's just a little bit of sadness. So anyway, um, but the new catalog does look amazing and the new ink colors look fun. So any demonstrator gets to see and order from the new stuff early. So that's one of the perks in, in perks of being a demonstrator in addition to um, just that 20% discount that you get, which is always nice. So let's see what else. Um, I do a class to go every month and I was playing around with the Vine Design uh, bundle and it is gorgeous. And I'm so sorry that I set this up so that the words are backwards. So next week, maybe I won't do that. But anyway, really great sentiments, classic, clean font, and then the pretty floral and leaf images. But what's especially cool is that the dyes are these really gorgeous flower kind of, they look kind of like doilies, but they're different shapes and each one has different flowers in it. And then they're coordinating um, flowers and stamp, flower dyes and stamps. Um, and then here's that label die as well. So it's gorgeous. But I decided that I really didn't want to use it for my class to go. So what I'm doing instead is anyone who buys the Vine Design bundle between now and April 15th will receive a kit and a PDF with pictures and instructions to make four cards. And so this is the first one. Um, and it just fun colors. Um, I use the pool party. Uh, three-eighths inch shimmer ribbon is maybe what it's called 
and then the stitched rectangle dies here and also on that vellum and then I just decorated the inside too and then this little happy birthday card and this thinking of you card I don't know this looked like Easter to me the way it turned out looking kind of like an egg and then I used some of our new shimmer paper behind it as well and I just really was happy with how this turned out and I also used our elegant faceted gems I think is what these are called so those are on each of the cards but there are three different colors one's clear one's frosted and then one is kind of this pinky one. So, and this one's really versatile. Um, it goes with lots of different colors, even though it does have color to it. So this one was kind of a fun fold. Um, and I just used the butterfly suite that came out recently as well. So anyway, if you would like to order the Vine Design bundle through me, then you will receive that kit in the mail. And next, um, let me see what else I've got piled up under here. So some of my favorite things are retiring, like I said. Um, the stitched shapes dies are one of them, and then this um, To a Wild Rose set, and the scripty embossing folder. And then this is the peony paper, and we always know that all of the designer series paper will retire, but this one has just been really pretty because it's such subtle colors and some just kind of patterns like that. Um, let me see, nothing on that one. Oh, the ornate garden set. So the sentiment stamp set that's in this collection is staying, but the, um, the paper and the flowers, which I didn't stamp here, that, um, that is all retiring. And then this ribbon as well. So this is terracotta tile, which is another color out of the end colors that's retiring. Um, so yeah, those are just kind of some fun ideas. Um, and I think that is everything. Um, so I always ask every week what kind of stuff you would like to see. If you ever want to see a technique or a certain bundle, assuming I have it, then I'm happy to do projects with it. And then <clears throat> tonight I'm showing you the March paper pumpkin. The sign up period for the April paper pumpkin is going on right now through April 10th. And its theme is so cool. And it's really bright, rich, kind of summery colors. And it's popsicles, which is really fun. So they designed it with kids in mind. But obviously it would be great to do... Uh, you know, to send cards to kids or to do with kids or just because you like sweets like me. So there you go. That is one that you don't want to miss. And the link is in the description to sign up for that. So we're going to get started on the cards that I made, the, or the one card that I'm making tonight in the envelope. Um, but I will show you, I did this with the mask, the Starry Night mask. And it didn't go quite as smoothly as I was expecting. <laughs> so I inked with Versamark and a sponge through the stencil, but then I, I had sponged the background already and I think that the ink maybe wasn't dry enough. So there's lots of silver embossing powder on here. <laughs> wasn't really supposed to be there, but it turned out okay. So that's one. Um, and then this guy, I used the evergreen embossing folder and I inked it up and then I did the stencil behind it and I just had a, like a mat, you know, kind of so that I would only ink in the, the framed area. And I'll show you, I haven't washed it yet, but you can ink your embossing folders and I never can remember which side is the side that I want to ink up. So I just always do both. And um, then you get the image, you know, is there's either ink on the image or ink around the image, depending on which side you're looking at. And I was too lazy to clean all of that. And that does show up too. So word to the wise, um, clean that off. But otherwise, that's a fun tip. That's really simple, but it really steps up your cards. 
This one I used the white craft ink and the cloud stencil. And then these dies are from the Hippo and Friends. And this is the one that we're gonna use tonight. And I think, kind of think it's funny, this um, flower stamp, I really liked the best out of the stamps in this kit. And I only used it on one of my alternates. But anyway, this is what we're doing. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. I also pulled in some of this um, Seaside Spray Shimmer Ribbon that honestly had gotten stuck in the back of my drawer and I have barely used it and it's gorgeous. So glad that I realized that it would go with this. So let's start with our envelope and I'm just gonna bring in my Stampin' Trimmer here. So what you want to do, so here's the top of your liner. And you're going to cut off this bottom section. So we'll make sure we've got the right um, blade here, the, the cutting blade. And I want this to be, let me just make, double check here. I want this to be at the three and a half mark. So bring that down and then yeah, it looks so small um and then the other thing that I'm gonna do is just score from the bottom of the liner 13 sixteenths of an inch up so I apologize for using sixteenths that's really not nice but um it, that is where it turned out to be so Okay, and then I'm gonna get rid of my cutting blade and make sure when you're scoring, you just wanna go really soft because this can punch through designer series paper really easily. Um, cardstock, you need more pressure, but it's very sad when you tear your beautiful printed paper like I did today. So, you know, even when you've been doing this for a while, you do things that you know better and that don't make a lot of sense. So, all right, so then the other thing that I will tell you is that I did this two different times just trying to figure out the best way to do it. And what I decided is that this bottom section, it's not going anywhere. And I was always taught that when you're putting a card in an envelope, you put it so that it faces the back of the envelope so that when the recipient is getting it, they open it and see the front right away. And so as long as you're doing that, your back is flat and it will never pull up on this lip right there. So that's that's what we're going with. So I'm gonna tuck this in, and actually I'm gonna go ahead and just fold that to give me a little better reference point there. Okay, and then I just wanna match up my score lines and make sure that I am centered. And then I'm gonna fold this back down. And I'm just gonna use some liquid glue um, you could also use Seal or Seal Plus. Um, blue dots out of the kit are perfectly fine. Oh, and there you go. That's why you put downward pressure and not sideways pressure. So I'm telling you, it is one of those days. Jonah was home from school today because apparently spring break needs to be more than a week long. And it just threw off my whole game. So... I think he must be really worn out for some reason because he was whiny and his cousins were the same way. So yeah, they need the break apparently. All right, so back to the actual card. Now this, this paper is directional and so you do just wanna make sure um, that you're turning your card the right way. And you could certainly cut this into other sizes. I just cut off this little um, three quarters of an inch strip. And I set it aside. Um, I don't know if I'll ever come back to it. I know some people use every last little bit of the paper that they have um, in the kit and I just am not that way. Once I'm done with it, everything else goes because I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with all of my clutter. So anyway, um, all right, here is 
my card base and I just pulled a piece of petal pink out of my stash. But you could also have taken the actual um, petal pink card base that has the printed front and just covered up that front. So before I stick this on, I actually want to tie a ribbon around it and make a bow. I can't get straight in the camera today. It is just a mess. Joe worked from home yesterday on this desk and I had to rearrange everything so that he could fit. And yeah, I did not do a good job of getting my setup back the way it was, but that's, that's fine. We're making it work, right? So, I just want this to lie pretty flat and then make my loops. And then I'll fiddle with the loops until I get them to be the size that I want. So, I feel like that's looser than I want. So I'm just gonna try one more time. And I know there are tricks to make this easier, but usually just winging it works out, so. Okay, there we go. And I do not have a dedicated pair of ribbon scissors. It's something that I always think I should do and just never get around to. Um, so far it hasn't been a problem, but I also don't cut a ton of paper with my snips because I'm not a huge fan of fussy cutting. So, you know, use what you have. Find the techniques that you like. All right, so just gonna glue this straight onto the cardstock. And honestly, this card came together so quickly and it really just, the flowers are so happy. Kind of worried we are having another cold spell. I mean, it is only the end of March and all of our trees are looking like they think it's April. <laughs> I've got bulbs popping up and just all sorts of different signs of spring, but I really think that we're not quite ready for it. So the next thing that I want to do, and guys, these are retiring, but I've got my two inch punch and my two and a quarter inch punch. So they're so handy. Um, so I'm just going to cut seaside spray and the two inch. And then I'm going to come over here with my two and a quarter and get a matte piece of the um, Pretty Peacock. Okay, now before I stick these together, I do want to get my stamping done on here. And I just decided to use Memento ink for this because I couldn't figure out how else to get colors that made sense. Um, you know, you don't want to stamp it like it's all petals and you don't want to stamp it like it's all foliage. So black it is. All right, just set this off a little bit. There we go. And then I'm also going to take the labels that were included so they did two different sizes, these little bitty ones and then the bigger ones. And this stamp is tiny. It's surprisingly small, um, but it, you know, it looks really good once it's on the right label and everything. So we're gonna call that straight. There we go. And we are just about there. So again, just gonna glue this down. And I just make sure that the larger circle is even all the way around. And then 
So for the first one, I used glue to adhere the circles, but for this one, I really think I'm just gonna use dimensionals because going over that ribbon is just a little bit tough. Um, it works, but why not pop it up when you can? And I could certainly find larger dimensionals rather than doing so many little ones, but I actually think that having a pretty good um, spread of them makes the, the element show up and stay nice and flat a little bit easier. So, I'll do that just there, and then I'm also going to stick happy birthday on, and I try not to do too many layers of dimensionals, so maybe we'll just glue this one on with glue dots. And that is just about it. So quick and simple tonight, but I did just wanna take some time to show you how wonderful Paper Pumpkin is, and we are headed on a beach vacation, and I am planning to take one of my unfinished kits out of my stash and have something to do while we're there because the optimist in me is always thinking I'm gonna have more time than I actually do and that my kids will entertain themselves more than they actually do. So I hope you love this and I really appreciate you catching me here or on the replay. Um, if you are catching me on the replay, you can always shoot me questions. Um, I am here every Thursday night, uh, 7.30 Mountain Time, and I hope to see you back here next week. And actually, I did want to mention, next week I'm going to be doing mystery stamping. So that's always fun, um, and I'll get all of the information and everything that you need will be just on my Facebook page over the course of the next week. And I hope to see you then. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Bye-bye.